Hi there, my name is Emma and I'm with Brushstrokes Tustin. Today I'll be teaching you this adorable little raccoon popping out of some flowers just in time for spring from our paint kit. So thank you so much for purchasing one. It should have come with some paint, napkin, uh, some brushes, a plate to put your paint on, um, and a canvas to paint on. So before we get started, I do want to let you know that this paint is acrylic paint, which means it's permanent, it will stain your clothes. I recommend putting on an old t-shirt or if you have an apron like me, go ahead and put that on. If you've got long sleeves, I recommend rolling those up just to be safe to protect your clothes. Um, you also wanna protect the surface you're painting on. I recommend putting down newspaper. Um, I use butcher paper to cover my table, but do whatever you need to do to protect the surfaces you're painting on. So with that, I think we can go ahead and get started. Let's get painting. So I've got all my supplies ready. I've got my sample, um, my new canvas, my paint brushes, and my paint. I also got a water cup. You can use any sort of cup you want for the water, plastic, paper, anything like that, but we'll be using that to rinse our brush. And then I also poured out my paint on my plate. Try to make it so it's not touching. I'm just using a smaller plate for the sake of space in this video, but try to make all of the paint not touching. You can use whatever you want to remove the paint from those little containers. Um, I recommend some sort of plastic utensil, something like that, so you can just wipe it off in between colors uh, to pour your paint out onto your plate. So take a second to go ahead and do that. Um, once that's done, we can go ahead and get started. I'm going to grab my largest brush and I'm going to start sketching out my cute little raccoon. So I'm gonna do a gray first. So I'm gonna take a scoop off the edge of my white. It's gonna be mostly white. And then I can take a little tiny, little tiny scoop of black and mix those two together. And that's going to get me a light gray. Again, it's mostly white and just a little bit of black and I can mix a nice little pile of that. I'm still saving, I'm taking scoops off the edge because I wanna save these paints for when I uh, might wanna use them later. So we're first going to start with a giant frowny face across our canvas. Now, if this is the middle line, you don't need to make that line, but if that's the middle line, I want to go from one side of that line all the way to the other. A giant scoop across the canvas. So that's going to be the top of my head or my little raccoon. And then um, I am going to do a smaller scooped line that's really gonna curve back in. See how it curves? It's not a complete uh, rainbow line. It kind of indents in over here. Now, once I've got that, I can start to fill it in. And I can just fill in the whole thing. I'm not too worried about this black eye area. I can do little brush strokes going down over here. Maybe fill it in the curve. It really doesn't matter too much how you fill it in but I'm just gonna try to stick to going with how the fur might grow, which would be down here and to the sides over here. So I can paint the full thing in and then just paint over it um, in black in a second. Hitting the full thing in gray. It's, if you can see some of the brush strokes, that's all right. That's totally fine. Just filling it all in with my white and gray. And you can see these guys come out to a nice little point on this edge. Now I want to add my ears. Why not? I'm gonna mix a little bit more gray, and again, that's mostly white. And I can just go to each side and do a triangle on each side. I can fill it in a little bit. I want the middle to stay white, so when I add my pink later, I'll be able to see it really easily. Okay, now I wanna go back and add this black middle part. So I can take some solid black, I don't need to rinse my brush off, and I can make a little tiny rainbow shape, right? It's another rainbow shape. 
and then I can go all the way to the edge and make another rainbow shape on top of it. So it goes all the way to the edge, one big rainbow. See how it's a curve up and then back down. Got a curve up and back down and now I wanna fill that area in in the middle. And I'm doing nice tiny brush strokes so you can kind of see almost acts like fur if I do nice little brush strokes with my big brush. Little tiny brush strokes. It still might be wet. The black should, for the most part, overpower any of the gray, but it might still be just a little bit wet and that's all right. Just go in with another layer. And I like to do little tiny brush strokes around the edges so the lines aren't totally perfect. Do, 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 do. Now, I also wanna take this black, I wanna press down, I wanna flick up and out. So I have a little bit of that black that goes into the middle of the head. So I'm starting on this side, the side of the black, uh, what's it called? So I'm starting on this side, the side of the black rainbow. And I can also take a little bit of this. So I'm always starting in the rainbow and flicking my brush down and away from the rainbow. So or away from the rainbow, away, away, away. Always flicking away from that little rainbow. So we can also throw in our little nose. That's just going to be an oval. Be very careful with your oval. Right in this gray area, very close to the bottom. Super cute. Now, I accidentally went a little bit too far. I'm gonna go back, oops, with some light gray. And make this a little bit lighter, giving them a little bit more of a jawline. I can also go back and add any hairs I want to. So for hairs, I would just add just a slightly different shade of gray and I'm doing little tiny brush strokes, little tiny brush strokes around. So there's a little bit more dimension in mine. I've got a lot of gray caked on my brush. I'm gonna go in with the last coat of this black now that it's slightly more dry. And if your paint is taking a while to dry, you can go ahead and pause this video, take a little break and wait for your paint to dry if it's being a little bit slow. If you do a nice thin coat, it should be pretty quick, but um, if you did a thick coat, it might take a second or two to dry. So um, I'm gonna add my little details of um, the face later. So I can, at this point, wipe my brush off and then rinse it off in the water. I can just swirl it around, be careful. This is why we line our um, surface that we're working on. I had a little spill earlier, um, but you just wanna very carefully wipe, wipe, wipe in the water, right along the bottom, maybe tap it off, and then dry it off on the napkin, and it should be good to go. So I wanna create this kind of watercolory looking background. So I'm going to take some green and I'm gonna take a scoop of my yellow right off the edge of my yellow. I'm leaving the rest of it clean. And then a little scoop off the edge of my white. And I'll get a nice light green. And I can use that color to fill in the whole background. Now at this point, if I wanna take a little bit of this water dip my brush in the water and then bring it to the canvas, this will create more of a watercolor effect. I just take my brush, dip it in water and see how it's all watery. Then I can start to spread it around my canvas and it'll have a little bit of an effect where it creates kind of multiple shades of green. If you can see, you can really see my brush strokes. And I like that effect. If you don't, you can not add water and you can just stick with uh, your white, yellow, and green. But I like to have a little bit of color variation going on. So I'll fill this whole thing in with green. As you're doing this or after you're done with this, you can also paint the sides of your canvas. You can see it looks a little bit unfinished when my sides aren't painted. So if I wanna go ahead and take my brush 
and paint the sides. See so yeah, that looks a lot more finished than that. Um, I would take the time to paint all of your sides as well. I'm not going to um, just for the sake of this tutorial, but I highly recommend painting those sides, all of the sides, including the top and the bottom up here and down here. So let's keep painting, filling in that whole background. If you run out of paint, you can always mix more. Again, that was yellow, green, and white. And I mixed some water in there as well to make it a little bit, let's get some more water, a little bit, whoa, <laughs> more like watercolor. Had an explosion over there, whoopsie daisy. So I'll just smear that around. If I've got, I've got too much water, I can scrape it off a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. So you can go ahead, pause this video, paint your sides and finish the background. So once your background is dry, mine still might be a little bit wet. I only waited a tiny bit. Um, I can take some green and go right underneath, just some solid green, very, very carefully, right underneath that face to do a little bit of shadowing. Almost like, cause this is supposed to be a little raccoon point up, po poking its head out of some flower bushes. So you almost want it to have a shadow. I can rinse my brush off, dry it off and then I can get ready to do some flowers. So um, I'll start with my red flowers. I'm just going to take my big brush and I'm going to take a scoop of red and I'm going to start in the middle and flick away. One, two, three, four, five times. These petals don't have to be perfect and you can tell that my um, my background's still wet, so it's not having the greatest of effects. But I'm gonna try to start on the inside and take my brush, and go out every single time. I might accidentally go in. Oops, I just went in. Uh, but you wanna try to go out and away and do about five brush strokes. Spread these guys out all over your canvas. Again, this is gonna have a little bit better of an effect if your paint is dry in the background. Maybe I'll have one that's going off the edge where I can only see three. But the goal by the end of this is to have as many flowers as possible. We really want it to look bright and fun. So I can wipe my brush off or rinse it off. And now I can do my solid white, almost daisy flowers. Same technique, you're gonna start on the inside and flick your brush out or try to, I know it's super hard to remember. It's very tempting to go the other way and I, I know I keep doing it as well. But the goal is just to have five little petals um, around each flower. And I would definitely recommend having some that go off the edge. They don't have to be perfect. Do, do, do. Maybe some that are behind his little face. Okay, now once that's done, I can take scoops of yellow, a nice big scoop, and I can go in the middle of each of these, or I can do yellow and white. We're just adding centers to all of these cute little flowers. Just tapping right in the middle for a center. And of course, you can pause this video at any time. I did the flowers kind of quickly. So if you need to pause the video and restart it, of course you can do that. All right. So I think I wanna add some maybe yellow and white flowers as well. So I'll take a little bit more of my white. And I'll just do a few petals kind of in between. It's almost like a half flower. I'm just adding some petals or even dots right in between just to really fill up that space. Our eye is not even gonna realize these aren't real flowers. Um, it'll just see 
all of the space together. So I think we're done with our big brush. Actually, I might rinse it off. Let me just do one last step, maybe two last steps. I'm gonna rinse it off and I'm going to grab some white and red. I'll mix those together. And let's fill in the ears. Those cute little ears with our white and red. Super cute. Okay, and then the very last thing I promise with the big brush is I'll wipe it off and get some of that gray color from before. And let's create little paws. Got my gray on my brush, and I'm gonna go one, two, three paws, starting on the side of the face and going out, almost in a little triangle. One, two, three paws on either side. So cute. Now I'll be done with my big brush. I'll put that in the water. And I'm gonna add these little white details. So I can take a scoop of my white and I'm going to act like I'm about to make a C. If I were to draw a line straight up, I'm not going to, but that's where the eye would be, right from the nose. I'm gonna act like I'm drawing a C, but I won't complete it, or a circle and I won't complete it. And then I'll do another one again, right on the side of that nose. There we go. And then we want to wipe our brush off. If you got a little black on there. Now, right underneath this side, that top of the C, I'm going to do a little tiny dot. And then I'll do a, a little highlight for my nose. So cute. Now, if I wanna add any other tiny lines, add more hair if I want to with my smallest brush, go back and add more whiskers I can, or even line the nose, and make it a little bit more black. You can really go back and add some cute little details at this point with your smallest brush. I don't have too many other details on the sample, but if you want to, of course you can keep kind of messing with it. Um, if you wanna go back and make your flowers a little bit more specific, this is a very loose painting, but if you want to go back and kind of round out the edges, you certainly can. You can tell the difference between the more rounded edges and the ones that were a little bit faster. If you like that look, you can certainly leave it like that. Um, but that's that's about it. You can sign your painting if you want to with your smallest brush Make sure once you're done with these brushes you rinse them out really really well with warm Water and some soap because they are reusable and feel free to use this paint um, While it's still wet if you want to try to make another painting you definitely can but thank you so so much And I hope you enjoyed